So for your review for your quiz, it's on Monday. Your quiz covers sections 2-1 and 2-2. For these, a lot of them are solving your equations for x. Some of them, are, you're going to have special cases where you have either no solution or infinitely many solutions. You'll also, like I said earlier, uh, see those equations where you're solving for a specific variable. You'll have some that you see here on your review. You'll have some that tell you that, like, for example, 11. If you have ax plus b is equal to c, a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to 7. Solve for x. Okay. Starting off with 1 through 6, we are just solving these equations for x. For number 1, we have 2x plus 9 is equal to negative 11. We want to get x by itself, so what do we need to do in order to get the x by itself? Subtract 9 from each side. So we're going to subtract 9 from itself as well as that negative 11. Good. Good. You can always check it, right? Negative 11, or, right. So you know that if you want to check it, you just plug your answer back into the original equation. If you get a true statement, your answer is definitely correct. For number 2, we have 3 fourths m plus 5 is equal to 1 half m. For this one, you can either get rid of your fractions to begin with or work with them. Um, if it was me, I'd get rid of your fractions before I even start working with this so I don't have to work with them. If you were not to get rid of your fractions, I would rewrite the, in, the, the equation with that 1 half, having a denominator of 4, so that way it's easier for you to move over those m's and combine like terms with them. So if we were to get rid of the fractions within this, we're going to multiply the entire equation by the least common denominator. You have two denominators of 4 and 2 here. What is your least common denominator? It's 4. So you're going to multiply the entire equation, so everything in that equation, by the 4. So you're going to do 4 times 3 fourths m. And you're going to have 4 times 5. And you're going to have 4 times 1 half m. The 4 times 3 fourths m, what happens to those two 4s? They cancel out, so they become 1s. So it's just 1 times 3m, which is 3m. Then you have the 4 times 5, which is? And then 4 times 1 half m. The 2 becomes 1. The 4 becomes 2, so 2 times 1m is just 2m. From here, we want m by itself on its own side. So that 3m has to move to the other side. How are we going to move that 3m over? Subtract it from each side. What is 2m minus 3m? So that gives us 20 is equal to negative 1m or negative m. We're going to divide each side by what in order to get m to be positive? This turns that negative m into a positive m as well as the 1 underneath it, a positive 1. So that's just m is equal to 20 divided by negative 1 is negative 20. Good. And if we were just to check it, we'd plug it in, multiply where we need to, and then see that we get a true statement. So our answer is correct. For number 3, we're given negative 9 plus 3 is equal to 5 minus 11x. So that negative 9x and that negative 11x, you have x on both sides of that equation. Which one do you, would you like to move over first? The 9. The 9. So how are we going to move the 9x over? Okay, so if we add 9x to both sides, we're going to add it to the negative 11x as well. So this is going to give us 3 is equal to 5. What? Um, negative. negative 2, so minus 2x. From here, what are we going to move over next? The 5. How are we going to move the 5 over? Okay. What is 3 minus 5? 
So negative 2 is equal to negative 2x. Get x by itself. What are we doing? What is negative 2 divided by negative 2? So x is equal to 1. For number 4, we have 6 minus 3 times x plus 2 is equal to 4 times x minus 7. What's the first thing that we know we have to do in order to be able to move anything over? Distribute. Distribute. So we're going to do that negative 3 times x, which gives us? The negative 3 times 2 is? And then the 4 times x? And 4 times negative 7? Good. What are we moving over or what are we combining first? What are we moving? Add it, subtract it. Which what are we doing? So we're so, there we go. Good. So negative seven x is equal to negative twenty eight. Now what? Divide by negative seven, and get that x is four. Good. For number 5, we have 0.8x plus 120 is equal to x minus 70. Do you want to work with that decimal or do you want to get rid of it first? Get rid of it. How are we going to get rid of that decimal? What are we multiplying the entire equation by? 10. So every single term gets multiplied by the 10. So 10 times 0 0.8 moves the decimal point. That's going to give us 8x. The 10 times 120 is 1,200. 10 times x is 10x. And 10 times negative 70 is negative 700. What would you like to move over first? OK, so we're going to subtract the 8x from each side. So this is going to give us 1,200 is equal to 10x minus 8x is 2x minus 700. From here, add your 700 to both sides. So we have 1,900 is equal to 2x. We're going to divide each side by the 2. 2 goes into 19, 9 times with 1 left over. 2 goes into 10, 5 times. And then we have that 0 left over. So it's just 950. So for our next question, for number 6, we have 0.09x plus 3.4 is equal to 0.4x plus 65.4. Do you want to work this one with the decimal since the last one we didn't? Yes. Okay. So for this one, what would you like to move over first? Um, you want to move that one over first? How are we going to move it over? Um, are you? What is it? No, because the 0 0.4 is greater than the 0 0.09. So when you do this, you're really doing 0 0.40. Hold on. Come on. 0 0.40 minus 0 0.09. That's going to give you a negative because the 0 0.09 is positive and that's smaller. So you can't take 9 from 0, so that becomes a 10. That's going to give you 1. That 4 becomes a 3, so that's 0 0.31. So negative 0 0.31x plus 3.4 is equal to 65.4. What are you moving over now? Mm -hmm. How? Yep. 
So this drops down, negative 0.31x is equal to, the fours are going to give you zero, bring down your decimal point, five minus three is two, and then six drops down, so that's just 62. From here, you're going to divide each side by that negative 0.31, right? Yep. So x is going to be, I'm going to bring that negative up top, 6,200 divided by 31. How many times does 31 go into 62? So negative 200. So for 7, 8, 9, and 10, it tells you to tell like what type of statement or what type of equation it is. And I'm not going to require that, so you're not doing that. You're just solving these. Remember, while you do these, if you get something that's a true statement, your answer is infinitely many solutions. If you get something that's a false statement, your answer is no solution. So for number 7, you have 7x minus 12x is equal to negative 5x. What is 7x minus 12x? Negative 5x is equal to negative 5x. What type of statement is this? It's a true statement, so it's infinitely many solutions. For number 8, we have 7x minus 12x is equal to negative 5. Again, we said that negative 7x minus 12x is what? Mm -hmm. So negative 5x is equal to negative 5. You only have an x on one side of this equation, so get x by itself. Right now it's being multiplied, so... Divide both sides by negative 5. Good. Good. For number 9, we have 7x minus 12x is equal to 6x. Once again, the 7x minus 12x is... Negative 5x. So if it's a false statement, what's our answer? Good. For number 10, we have 7x minus 12x is equal to negative 5 plus 4. Again, the 7x minus 12x is? Negative 5x is equal to negative 5x plus 4. What are we going to do from here? Okay, so we'll add it to both sides. To 0, exactly. So 0 is equal to 4. Good. For 11 and 12, our directions tell us to solve for x. For number 11, we have ax plus b is equal to c. Get that ax by itself first. What are you going to do to that b to move it over? Mm -hmm. So ax is equal to c minus b. How now are you going to get x by itself? What's happening? Okay. Good. For our last question, number 12, we have m times x minus a is equal to 3 times x minus b. When you do this one, the first thing that you're going to do is distribute that m and distribute that 3. So if you distribute that m, that m times x, we're going to have mx. The m times a, we're going to have a negative ax. With these, the reason why I put the a in front of the x is because it goes alphabetical order. a comes before x, so... We're just going to have, sorry, it should be a, m. And then the a comes before m, because like I said, alphabetic order. From here, distribute the 3. So 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative b is negative 3b. You have two terms, both on opposite sides, that include that x in them. Get them on the same side. So subtract the 3x from both sides. This is going to leave us with mx. I'd put the negative 3x next to the mx because they both have the x attached to them. Then I'm just going to have negative am 
is equal to negative 3b. You want the x's by themselves. Anything that doesn't have an x, you want it on the other side. So add that am to both sides. This is going to leave us with mx minus 3x is equal to am minus 3b. On the left side, you have a 3x, you have a negative 3, or sorry, you have an mx, you have a negative 3x. What do both of those terms have that's the same? The x. If that's the case, then you can divide out an x from both of them. So we're going to factor out an x from both terms. If you're factoring out something that's the same in both, it's obviously important. So what's important goes first. That x will go first. Whatever's left over, it's like it's in timeout. It's going to be in the parentheses. So mx divided by x, what's left over? Just m. The negative 3x divided by x, what's left over? Just the negative 3. Everything else stays the same. From here, you want x by itself. Right now, x is being multiplied, because distribution and multiplication are the same thing, by that m minus 3. So divide each side by the m minus 3. Cancels out on the left side, so we have x is equal to am minus 3b all over m minus 3. You cannot do anything else with this, so leave it just like this.